Well, hello everybody and welcome. Good afternoon. Great to see all of you. Thank you so much for coming to join us for this celebration today. I'm Renelle Brooks-Moon from The Morning Show on 98.1 KISS FM and of course the voice of your 2012 world champion, San Francisco Giants. In fact, the last time I was at City Hall was Halloween 2012, right after the parade and the victory celebration. So it is great to be back and it is almost baseball season. Who is ready to defend our world title? I cannot wait. Well, I can't even begin to tell you how honored I am to serve as your host for this very special event. I want to welcome you officially to the San Francisco Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services Black History Month closing ceremony. And what a way to wrap things up. We gather here today to honor a San Francisco living legend, groundbreaking politician, activist, freedom fighter, and fashion icon, <laughs> the one and the only, the Honorable Willie L. Brown, Jr. Now, growing up in the Bay Area during the Civil Rights Movement, Mayor Brown's accomplishments, contributions to the community and the world at large, and his public service were not lost on me. And it has really been a dream come true for me to grow up and to get to know him personally and professionally. My late father and Willie were acquaintances and fraternity brothers. Shout out to Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. So growing up, I always felt that I knew him, but now I can really and proudly say that I really do know the man. Now, when he was elected San Francisco's first African-American mayor, I was right up there front and center, y'all, on inauguration day in 1996, and Channel 5 was out there reporting, and they included me in the news coverage that day. They interviewed me. I was hysterical. I was crying. I was emotional. And the camera lingered on my black power fist. I threw my, threw my fist up. And fast forward to January of 2009, when my husband Tommy and I were in Washington, D.C. for Barack Obama's first inauguration, and there I went with my fist again. More tears flowing, and I know I wasn't the only one from the Bay Area that was out there thinking about the shoulders on which the president stood, including those of Mayor Brown, who without question paved the way for President Obama and countless others. So today we celebrate all that he is, all that he has done, and all that he continues to do. The San Francisco Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services truly appreciates the generous support it has received during this 2013 Black History Month. So right now I'd like to take a moment and acknowledge our sponsors for today's event. San Francisco Firefighters Local 798. the San Francisco Police Officers Association, Wells Fargo Bank, Comcast, Yin Renaissance Foundation, AT&T, and Paradigm Assets Management Company. Thank you all for helping us out today. We also would like to thank Marcus Shelby of the Marcus Shelby Orchestra, who will be blessing us with his talents today. Now, the San Francisco Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services works tirelessly as a liaison between San Francisco neighborhoods and city government to make sure that the voice of the neighborhood is heard and that problems and concerns are handled effectively and respectfully. And now representing the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, I'd like to welcome to the podium the director, Ms. Christina Pallone. Thank you, Renell. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's my honor and pleasure to welcome each of you to Monza's first annual Black History Month closing ceremony. The Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services is dedicated to connecting city government to San Francisco's many diverse neighborhoods and communities. MONS functions as a vehicle through which information and access to resources are made available, particularly to those most in need. 
Today, we are honoring one of San Francisco's greatest legends, Honorable Willie L. Brown, Jr., for the incredible legacy that he has bestowed on local government. Yes. That he has bestowed on local government, the state, and our overall country. It is because of his exceptional dedication and tenacity to empowering the African American community to fight injustices and provide economic growth and development that I'm able to be up here today. Can everyone who has either worked for Honorable Brown or was appointed by him please stand or raise your hand if you're already standing? Soak in the impact of the number of people that just raised their hands or stood. What a tremendous honor it is to have this opportunity to say thank you, Honorable Brown, for what you have done to help us all grow and achieve significant heights professionally and personally. Lastly, I want to also personally recognize the African American women in city government who have greatly impacted me on my own professional journey. Supervisor London Breed, Supervisor Malia Cohen, City Administrator Naomi Kelly, and especially my former director, Rhonda Simmons. These women, <laughs> these women have been very instrumental in continuing the legacy that Honorable Brown established within his own career by giving back to their communities, providing opportunities for advancement and growth. It has been an honor to learn from each of you and particularly to Rhonda for giving me an opportunity to learn the grave importance of working in partnership, being transparent, and taking time to build infrastructure correctly. I need to also acknowledge all of the staff of Mons. Please raise your hand or stand. Oh, in the back. <laughs> These young people have dedicated long and countless hours to making all of the events and activities that Mons produces a success. It is because of each of them that Mons is able to make a difference. I am honored and deeply pleased to lead such an extraordinary group of people. Thank you and have a good event. Thank you, Christina. So proud of you. I've watched this child grow up before my very eyes. She's fantastic. And now let's welcome the 43rd mayor of the city and county of San Francisco, a longtime friend of Willie's, ladies and gentlemen, Mayor Ed Lee. Hello, sir. How are you? Hello, everybody. Welcome to the People's Palace. Uh, very briefly, uh, Ronell, thank you very much for that introduction, and Christina. Uh, Willie was joking just a minute ago and said, wait a minute, I thought budget cuts. You still got that neighborhood services going? <laughs> and, and of course, I said, well, well, I can't tell you everything because you write for a column in the newspaper. <laughs> but I just always learned the lessons from you. You know, you announced a cut, and then you quietly just hire everybody back. <laughs> you know? And all of a sudden, we got a neighborhood services. Uh, but I, uh, uh, I'm here tonight to, of course, uh, not only participate in this uh, uh, event, closing out the uh, uh, month of celebration and, and focus uh, and renewal of promises and uh, a reacquaintance with so many of you who are active and uh, leading our African American community together with the rest of the city to make it uh, continue to be uh, a city that I know uh, Mayor Brown had tried uh, all his years to continue being, which is the world-class city for everybody. Uh, and this is what I know uh, that uh, Willie has done all of his years. I think his history is quite clear, not only to everybody in this room, but anybody who works within this building knows that every detail of government, whether it's shining the brass in these elevators to the people who work here and the standards upon which they should be serving the public, uh, to great department heads and all the things that they do to 
continue the success of this city. Mayor Brown has done all of it, and he's paid attention to every detail. And I am still catching up to learn what it is to even be close to what he's been trying to do. And of course, especially this year with the trials and tribulations of, uh, I suppose, any mayor in their first elected year goes through, uh, you know, I take a lot of things personally, and I must always go back and say, Willie, did this happen to you? Uh, and of course, getting the great advice uh, that is absolutely necessary because uh, when you sit in this seat and you have the enormous responsibilities and you don't have the 30 years of experience that uh, Mayor Brown did, but you similarly appreciate what it takes uh, to run the city, you ask for help. And right now, I'm getting a lot of free help from Willie, and I appreciate that. Uh, it's, it really is uh, something that he has given uh, time and time again with my predecessor, Gavin Newsom, who leaned a lot on him, and I'm doing the same thing. And uh, if we get things done, it's a lot to do with making sure we don't make costly mistakes or anticipate what problems might be in this very great city. Uh, these are the personal things that I am learning, uh, that I need to have a team of people uh, around me that gives me that experience, that knowledge, the connections that we don't have. And it's not just within the city of San Francisco. Uh, if anything, Mayor Brown has got connections throughout the state, throughout the rest of the country. In fact, to some degree, in large part, my uh, relative limited success at the U.S. Conference of Mayors has much to do with his advice on how to talk and which mayors are effective that have been there a long time and can help me establish uh, a voice on the national level with the other mayors as we try to complete the things that we're doing here locally. We have given that a great voice. And so I just wanted to take this opportunity on these closing ceremonies to praise uh, a man that I think has done so much and more, I, I appreciate it even more deeply every single day uh, that I'm responsible for running this city, how much more he has done and how incredible. Even today, we were down together at the christening of our new cruise ship terminal, uh, something that I know that has been in struggle and planning for many, many years. And we both, uh, uh, you, we could almost see tears in our eyes to see how beautiful that compliment is that blesses the city. And these are projects that uh, Mayor Brown has done over and over and over again in all parts of the city. I will never forget, though, that when he was mayor and we were doing Mission Bay together, and that was my golf driving range, and he was, had this vision of turning it in from that desolate golf ball place to something that would welcome in today. 129 biotech companies located jobs in the thousands for people of all backgrounds, fulfilling a promise uh, in Hunter's Point with Lennar and giving us hope that we can go forward in building housing for everybody and rebuilding our communities. These are things he set in motion. Uh, I get the privilege of honoring that and uh, to let you know that when I walk through that hallway every single morning to my office, I'm looking up at those pictures, and I often say, okay, Willie, I'm walking in today. I, I get it done. I get it done. Uh, these are all reminders of the great mayors before us who set the footprints for us to fill, uh, and I am so happy that we have a chance to, yet again, honor someone in our midst who is continuing to do it and giving us a voice, even in the most uh, laughing, humorous way, uh, we all look forward to reading his column. All you admit it. I even have to look forward to reading his column, even though sometimes I dread what he's going to say. The pure enjoyment of the angle is what we all say. Oh, I didn't think of it in that way. Uh, that gives us great pause to, again, celebrate uh, his achievements, his accomplishments, and his continued love for the city and for everybody in it. So... Mayor Brown, thank you very much to you, to your friends, to all of your supporters for being here. Uh, happy African American History Month.
and more than a month. Let's continue celebrating. Let's keep doing this. This is, this is a great enjoyment for all of us. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. Thanks for giving us a little insight into the relationship that you two share. And not too shabby to have Willie Brown as an advisor for you. You know what I'm saying? Well, now it's time to welcome and acknowledge our special guests. Please stand and be recognized. President of the Board of Supervisors, David Chu. Is David here? Or are they still in session? <laughs> They're still in session. Well, we also want to acknowledge District 5 Supervisor, London Breed. District 10 Supervisor, representing my hood, Malia Cohen. San Francisco's first African-American City Administrator, Naomi Kelly. The Mayor's Office, Deputy Chief of Staff for Public Safety, Paul Henderson. San Francisco Treasurer, Jose Cisneros. San Francisco Port Commissioner, Kimberly Brandon. Commissioner, Southeast Facility, Toye Moses. Oakland Port Commissioner, Brian Parker. <laughs> Director of Workforce Development, Office of Economic Workforce Development, Rhonda Simmons. <laughs> and President, Jack and Jill of America, Incorporated, San Francisco Chapter, and former Civil Service Commissioner, Karen Clopton. Thank you all so much. Well, we are so thrilled that our most distinguished keynote speaker was able to work us into his schedule today. Willie has a way of getting folks to show up, you know. He attended the American Conservatory Theater in San Francisco and went on to appear on the big screen and on the Broadway stage. In 2004, he graduated from San Francisco State University with a degree in cinema. Please give a warm welcome to and put your hands together for the great, the amazing Delroy Lindo. Thank you, thank you. Uh, can everybody hear me? Okay. Um, I have to say that um, after agreeing uh, to, to, to be here this afternoon, uh, a few, some short time after, I was sent a, a, a schedule. And on the schedule, I saw that I had 10 minutes for my um, keynote address. And then some while later, they sent me another schedule. And I had 15 minutes. And then they sent me another schedule, and I had 20 minutes. And I get here this afternoon, and they're giving a brother 10 minutes. <laughs> so now, I got, some, I got something to show y'all. This is the speech that I wrote when I had 20 minutes. <laughs> so now y'all gonna have to sit here and listen to this. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> so when uh, Christina asked me to do this, uh, to, be, to be keynote for this address, I, uh, I answered immediately and very emphatically, yes, I would do it. Truth be told, um, I wasn't sure quite why I was answering so quickly and so emphatically in the affirmative. Um, as I thought about it, 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 it's not as if there is any great public or private connection between Mayor Brown and myself, even though, like many other people, I've always admired and respected Mayor Brown, albeit from a distance. And I've always had the impression that the feeling of admiration and respect is mutual. Willie, you do admire and respect me, right? Okay, all right. It's mutual. Um, <laughs> so out of, out of my admiration for Mayor Brown, I knew that I wanted to be a part of this event celebrating the man and his enduring impact on the city of San Francisco, the state of California, and indeed the national 
political and socio-political st stage all over the country. I simply had to be here. Now, what is the nature of Mayor Brown's impact? Short answer, Willie Brown is a game changer. There are the way things were before Willie, and there are the way things are after Willie has made his impact felt. Willie Brown is a game changer. Some other definitions of game changer. A person who is a visionary. A game changer changes the way that something is done, thought about, or made. A game changer has new and different ideas that stand out from the crowd. This person has an idea that completely changes the way a situation develops. A game changer puts an imprint on a given environment or situation that causes a paradigm shift or the birth of a new model. Willie Brown is a game changer. A brief look at his career corroborates that. As a criminal defense attorney practicing in San Francisco at a time when there were very few black attorneys, this man routinely defended the defenseless, taking on cases that more prominent lawyers refused to take on. Mario Savio, the young student activist from the University of California, Berkeley, on his first civil disobedience arrest, and then Mayor Brown quickly became involved in the civil rights movement, leading a well-orchestrated sit-in to protest housing discrimination after a local real estate office refused to work with him because he was black. Then there were a very significant series of firsts. First African-American elected to represent San Francisco in the California State Assembly. The first African-American speaker of the California State Assembly. And later still, as we all know, the first African-American mayor of San Francisco. The first, the first, the first. And as Speaker of the Assembly, he would also become the first and only politician to hold that position for 15 years, longer than any other individual, so much so that indeed a new paradigm was created with Prop 140, which instituted term limits. <laughs> Had that not happened, in all likelihood, Willie Brown might still be speaker had he so desired. That's worth, it's worth noting that Willie, Willie became the Speaker of the State Assembly after winning the support of a coalition of Republicans and Democrats. 28 Republicans, 23 Democrats. Now, some may say that this harkens back to a period of a more conciliatory and less contentious time in American politics. But I would contend that this is also indicative of Willie's enduring ability to negotiate people in a skillful and supremely effective manner. And as I've examined Willie's life and career a little more closely, it turns out that he and I have some similar and parallel experiences, that that may explain in part why I felt I needed to be here. Now, I've always considered that my life as an actor started on a very new trajectory when I came to San Francisco to study. In that sense, my career then was born in San Francisco. Could I get some water? My mouth is very dry. Some water, please. Um, clearly, Willie Brown's life and career has taken on an extraordinary trajectory as a result of his having come to San Francisco. We both graduated San Francisco State. Now, I don't know about your tenure while you were there, Willie, but for me, Graduating San Francisco State in 2004 was very much a watershed moment, and I would bet that the same is true for you. Thank you. Oh, noise, please, noise. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm a diva. What can I say? I'm a diva. All right? <laughs> it, 
<laughs> it is that way, y'all. What can I say? <laughs> um, Willie worked for a time as a janitor to support himself, as did I. And while many of us must be dazzled when we first encounter some of the fabulous and prodigious San Francisco Victorians, thank you very much, uh, a black, a black uh, napkin. Just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> while many of us must be dazzled when, first, when we first encounter the fabulous and prodigious San Francisco Victorians, hearing how Willie describes how magical he found them to be when he first arrived in San Francisco very much mirrors how moved and excited I was when I first got here. I was mesmerized. When I first got to San Francisco and I'd walk around the Haight, the Fillmore Western Edition, Pacific Heights, just soaking up the city. Very, very similar to the effect that San Francisco had on you, Willie. I feel there's a direct connection between his career in law, his work in the civil rights movement, and that of his political career beyond, which demonstrates an inherent and deeply felt caring and concern for people. But also, he has the talent and the gifts to translate that caring and concern into political and social action. A gift. He makes time for people. And this is evidenced not only by examining Willie's record in public life, but I can also attest to this personally. On the various occasions that I came to City Hall to visit with Mayor Brown, there was always a really long line of people waiting to see him, a long and varied line. Some people had appointments, I assume some did not. But what struck me was it was always a very broad cross-section of people waiting to see Willie, people who Willie had made time for. I saw this every time I came to City Hall to visit Mayor Brown. And while he was certainly making time for me, and he's always been very open with me, and I appreciate that, Willie, always, he's never, ever not responded when I've reached out. He's always made time for me, but clearly, this is a man who made time for lots of different people. And in retrospect, I would say that the people that he was making time for represented a very broad cross-section of the people of San Francisco. And that is as it should be. Now, I have no idea what the outcomes were of those various meetings, but the fact is, Mayor Brown was giving people access to him and to City Hall. Thank you. Also, I've observed with Mayor Brown his capacity to pass the baton. He passes the baton on. I've observed him mentoring young people as he has ushered them to their careers. And we live today in a world that's increasingly complex and challenging. On the one hand, we have this world that is, is expanding phenomenally, it being possible to have a global impact with the merest touch of a computer button. Extraordinary. But on the other hand, we also live in a world that has become, in no small measure, an extremely jaded and small world, a world in which that which is purient oftentimes takes center stage. A world in which much of the mundane and the relatively ordinary seems to impress. A world in which the definition of celebrity seems to have broadened and stretched and flattened to the point that it embraces the truly mundane and uninteresting. But in the same world, in this city, we are graced to have a Willie Brown, a man who's not only a bona fide celebrity, he's a celebrated presence locally, nationally, and also a dynamic leader. 
One can easily ascribe the word to his career, dazzling. It's a dazzling career full of deeply significant and dazzling firsts, as we've mentioned. His mayoral inauguration included an open invitation party to which 10,000 people attended. And local restaurants provided 10,000 meals to the homeless. Now, who does that on that kind of a scale? Willie Brown does that. Now, I'm so glad y'all applauded. Give me something to get some water. <laughs> if I were younger, if I were hipper, you know, I'd probably kind of break out into a rap right about now, extolling the virtues of, uh, of Willie, his life, and his career. Now, were I to do that, break out into a rap, it might sound something like this. Y'all ready? When you think of Willie Brown, he really liked no other. He the kind of dude that you want as your brother. Wilkes and Bashes from head to toe. What else can I say? I can't say no more. Be at Assembly City Hall, he be doing his thing. Through the streets of San Francisco, he just make you want to sing. Because when you think of Willie Brown, he really liked no other. He the kind of dude that you want as your brother. He the kind of dude that you want as your brother. I said, he the kind of dude that you want as your brother. He the kind of dude that you want as your brother. He the kind of dude that you want as your brother. But since, <laughs> but since I'm an old dude, I'm not going to do that. Because that would be unseemly. <laughs> But what I will say is that when all is said and done, Willie would seem to be an individual who embodies the classic American story of success, of invention and reinvention. Born of talent, skill, determination, brilliance, lots of plain old hard work and the ability to take one's God-given talents, fashion it, shape it, mold it into something quite remark remarkable and remarkably effective and enduring. Willie Brown is a game changer. Thank you, Willie, for all your work, your talent, your brilliance, your heart, your passion, and for giving a damn. Thank you. And on that note, I believe I should bring Mayor Brown to the stage. Is that correct? Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, Mayor Willie Brown. remarkable. <laughs> but then again, you were from Oakland. Mr. Mayor, Christine, Rennell. Rennell was rather reserved tonight. Last week when we were at Mesa's doing Black History Month, the first thing she did when she hit that stage was say, see it? <laughs> she gets one of those World Series champion diamond rings. And she won't let her husband touch it. <laughs> she shares it with everybody and she's got two of them now. And she reminded people that she has two. And I thought she would do that again uh, tonight. Yes, it's my night, so you're being cool. I also notice, I also notice that 
David Chu showed up with some friends of his, uh, supervisors. Uh, David, would you please take a bow? And the rest of your supervisors, Malia, <laughs> London, Campos, the tall man, Scotty. Stand up, Scotty. Let people see you. Mr. Farrell. Eric Marr. Norman Yee. You got the whole board. Who's missing? Carmen Chu. Oh, my God. Holds every office there is. I mean, I am just so delighted, at Christina, that moms and the mayor's office and all of you together uh, decided to do a closing ceremony for Black History Month. Harlan would disagree with you on that uh, because tomorrow over at the Whitcomb, there's another Harlan Kelly version of Black History. Uh, and, and he's been doing it for years. Uh, it's the most inexpensive event that I've ever been to. And, I, and I'm going to try to get him to upgrade it, Mr. Mayor, now that he's the big man in, 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 in your operation. He really is uh, got to upgrade it. But it is, again, uh, clear evidence that Black History Month uh, has become for San Francisco a real important event. And it's consistent frankly, with how we recognize uh, the incredible diversity that is uh, this city. We just finished the most magnificent, magnificent Chinese New Year parade that I have had an occasion to participate in, in the last, uh, over the last 30 or more years. And at one time, Ed Lee was in, kind of in charge of you know, the Chinese, the ground operation of a parade, and, and that's why he doesn't ride in a car in this parade. He can't handle a parade in a car. He stays on the ground, just like he did this last weekend. And it was an, and the Lord obviously smiled on the Chinese because it didn't rain uh, this year. Most years it rains uh, for the Chinese New Year. This one was an incredible occasion, and it celebrated the fact that uh, the elevation over the last 10 years or so of the elected official family has reached out and it includes an array of Asian elected officials, all of whom were on display this last time around. And so, <clears throat> so in January and part of February was the Chinese New Year celebration. Now we're doing Black History Month on another, I think about five weeks We'll be doing the Cherry Blossom Festival, which is Japan Towns. And we will do shortly thereafter in May, the thing that Blanche Brown loves most, and, and that is Carnival and all that dancing business that they do in the mission uh, uh, on the occasion when they do that. And then we follow that almost instantly in June with this incredible occasion where the whole world sees how really diverse San Francisco is when you get 300 dykes on bikes leading a parade uh, of gay, lesbians, and others when we have our pride parade here in San Francisco. And then we actually eventually get around to letting the Italians do something in, 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 in October uh, for, for the Columbus Day celebration. So it's an incredible city. Delroy, it's a, just an incredible city, and you have to be attentive uh, to all of it. I uh, marvel at Bill Maher, who has a television program, and he called and he asked me, uh, what do you think uh, Republicans call uh, Black History Month? And I start to think, you know, Republicans, Black History Month, what could they call it? Uh, and before I could answer, he said February, But we call it Black History Month here in San Francisco, and we mean it's Black History Month in San Francisco. And I am, 
I am indeed um, delighted uh, that I am being honored. I'm looking forward uh, next year to the next person we honor. And I really want us, uh, Mr. Mayor, under your guidance and, and your leadership uh, to elevate uh, the level of Black History Month in the same way we have collectively elevated uh, the level of the Chinese uh, New Year's, how we've leveled St. Patrick's Day, how we've elevated uh, all of the other wonderful celebrations uh, that we do in the city, because it gives us a chance to teach and to demonstrate and to show exactly uh, who we are and what we're about and the kind of contributions we've made to the development of this nation. I am, again, honored and delighted. <laughs> I am absolutely honored and, and delighted. And uh, uh, Delroy, and, 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 and you, you, you performed. Uh, uh, yeah, I know. And, and uh, if they ever do a movie, I'm going to see if we can't consider casting you as me. And Rennell, again, thank you very much. And Christina, thank you. And to all of you, thank you for coming. I understand there's some interesting food uh, over there that uh, you're going to want to indulge in. And uh, I know that uh, it's going to be a continuation of just what we've done here in the Rotunda. And I must tell you, though, that the Rotunda is always a challenge to make it look better than how I left it. Uh, And this was one of my projects. Uh, Harlan was the city engineer at that time. And, 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 uh, and the mayor uh, was head of the Department of Public Works at that time. And we were really proud to do this city hall the way in which we did it. And I don't remember this fancy lighting being part of what we did. I don't remember this gold carpeting being part of what we did. Whoever did this clearly had in mind how I always want to appear. And so I, I am, I am, I'm, I'm really just delighted, but you really should have called me because my tie would have been a different color. The one and only Willie L. Brown, Jr. We have a presentation for you, sir. Oh. Yes, Christina has it. Yeah, yeah, you have to stay here. Not in where tonight. <laughs> Christina, would you, uh, you want that now? Well, then we shall do that. Can we give it up for Delroy Lindo one more time, too? That was fantastic. <laughs> Bet y'all didn't know you are going to see him rap today. All right, before we present Mr. Brown with his, his award tonight, we'd like to bring up representing, well, where'd they all go? Where are the supervisors? They, they, oh. All right. That wraps up that segment. Oh, Malia's ready? Where's Malia? Malia Cohen, everybody. District 10 supervisor now with some comments. Come on up. Yes, come up. Please don't leave me hanging here. Come on up, girl. Oh, <laughs> uh, um, Hello. <laughs> I, um, I'm a straggler. I'm, we recessed the board meeting to come down here. And uh, well, I guess they have a quorum. They don't need me up there, right? Um, hello, everyone. It feels so good to see you all here. And I agree, the rotunda looks absolutely wonderful. Congratulations, Mayor Lee and Mayor Brown. Thank you for allowing us an opportunity to come and celebrate you once again. It's an honor and a privilege. Um, I guess, really, I do have prepared remarks. I'll just skip to the end. And um, I'll just skip to the end. And I want to leave, I'm going to quote you from my words. I want to leave you with this, with the words of the poet and writer Maya Angelou from her poem, Still I Rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave, I dream and I hope, 
I dream the dream and the hope of a slave. I rise, I rise, and I rise. And I think that really captures African-American culture, history, tradition, not just here in San Francisco, but all across the world. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, yeah, thank you. She just wanted to reinforce and reiterate that everyone else is gone. She's like, thanks for putting me on the spot. They're all gone. Well, Willie has officially retired from politics, but he continues to lead a very busy life, lending his support to various charities, regular television appearances in which he pontificates on current political issues. He writes a weekly column for the San Francisco Chronicle, and he is a trusted advisor to many politicians. But perhaps what keeps him the busiest is keeping up with that beautiful and mature beyond her years 11-year-old daughter, Sydney. She's amazing, Mayor Brown, let me just say that. Let us hear it once again for San Francisco's very own, he is San Francisco, the incomparable, the honorable, Willie Lewis Brown Jr. And now Christina will present you with your award. Honorable Brown, on behalf of the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, we would like to present you with our uh, Living Legend Award for 2013 Black History Month closing ceremony. Let us all gather. Let us all gather. That's a great idea. That's a great idea. Stay right there, Will. Stay right there. Uh, let's get away from the. Um, from, yeah, let's stand over here, away from the uh, microphone. Willie said, off to the food. Not quite yet, sir. We're not done with you yet. This is your life. <laughs> we want to acknowledge from the mayor's office, from Gene Kwan's office in Oakland, Maisha Everhart is here representing Oaktown. That's from me and Delroy. And now, sir, we have a very special presentation Let's all welcome the president of Savannah Jazz LLC, faculty performing arts department, University of San Francisco, French American International School, and chairperson, Economic Development Committee, NAACP San Francisco branch, Dr. Pascal Bocard TM. Good afternoon, Mayor Brown, supervisors, friends. We're gathered here today to pay tribute to a man whose visionary guidance, leadership, and unwavering commitment to the preservation of America's only indigenous art form, jazz, has made the city of San Francisco a beacon for higher aesthetics around the world. I'm a jazz musician and jazz educator and a club owner. And I'm here on behalf of the jazz musicians, club owners, who could not be here to say thank you. From the artistry of King Oliver to the genius of Louis Armstrong, the magic of Duke Ellington to the swing of Count Basie, the elegance of Nat King Cole to the prestige of Lady Day, this art form born out of the African-American communities of the South 
literally lifted this nation to the status of a cultural superpower. <laughs> Mr. Brown, Mayor Brown, your commitment to the preservation of our American art form resulted in the creation of hundreds of jobs and thousands and thousands of nights of employment for jazz musicians in the city of San Francisco and all over the United States. <laughs> jazz musicians and college students from Europe to Asia, Australia to Africa, come to perform and visit the San Francisco jazz venues that were created under your leadership of the Jazz Preservation District. And to the man who dresses like the Duke, and I mean Ellington, who keeps a pulse on the city like the Count, and I mean Basie, and whose visionary commitment to this art form is unrivaled to date, Mr. Mayor Brown, we say thank you, we salute you. On behalf of my partners and hundreds of jazz musicians from San Francisco to New York City, Chicago to Miami, from Copenhagen to Tokyo, it is my pleasure on behalf of the Savannah Jazz Society to present you our plaque of recognition and to thank you for your efforts to keeping this art form alive. As the chairman of the Economic Development Committee of the NAACP San Francisco branch, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce to you our president, Reverend Dr. Amos Brown, who will be presenting our plaque of recognition for Mayor Brown's unwavering commitment to civil rights. Thank you, Reverend Brown, good to see you. And thank you, Dr. Pascal Bocar TM. Merci beaucoup. That's all I got. <laughs> I could listen to him talk all day, that was fantastic. All right, Christina, would you like to come up and have some closing words for us, dear? Christina Pallone, once again. Thank you, Renau. So we have a few thank yous, special thank yous that we want to wrap the ceremony up with. Um, if Renau, Elsie, and Deanna, if you could please come up. <laughs> we would greatly appreciate. <laughs> Where's Elsie? I saw Elsie somewhere. Oh, I'm about, okay, great. And Mr. Lindo, please, you each could. So on behalf of the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, we would like to each say thank you deeply for your contribution to making today's ceremony such a success. And we have gifts for each of you. Thank you You're very so much. much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. These are beautiful. And Mr. Lindo, for you. And we have certificates of honors for each of you as well. On behalf of the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Thank you, Christina. We're good at making certificates of honors. <laughs> this oh. Oh, and thank you. Thank you. Oh, okay. A photo? Why don't you come down and stay at the microphone? Okay. Okay.
And thank you to oh, very much. And thank you to everybody for your contribution, your time, your commitment to showing up today. For, to all the sponsors, we greatly appreciate all of the support. And now that concludes our ceremony. And please enjoy the reception. Thank you.